Hello, my name is Nigel Griffiths. I work in the Advanced Technology Centre in the UK as part of IBM Europe. This movie is about workload partitions, or WPAR for short, and application mobility, where we move these WPARs between machines. This is all part of AIX6. We're now going to use the command line to access and control our workload partitions. Right then, I'm using uh, VNC to give me an X Windows uh, access to our machine. This is uh, SSC 10. Uh, let's just uh, confirm the host name here. OK, now let's say we don't know anything about what's going on in this machine We're concerning uh, WPARs. So the first thing we have to do is uh, LS WPAR command. So here we can see, the uh, first of all, the names of the WPARs, and I've kept the host names the same to uh, keep things simple. We have the state here, uh, A is active, D is defined, uh, T is transitional, uh, B is broken, there's probably a couple more that I haven't seen very often. Um, S means these are system partitions, there'd be an A in here if this was uh, an application partition. And uh, here we have the directory in which the, uh, the file systems are actually sitting, we can go and have a look at those in a minute. Well, let's quickly see that um, this uh, my W part is defined. It's not active, so let's uh, start that up. Start W part, my W part, and um, let's actually time how long that takes. Also, I like to when that's running, we will uh, perhaps we'll stop here. WP ten. So we double check the options here. Stop WPAR minus H for hard stop, capital M for now, WP10. And I've got a typo here, so let's uh, correct that. There we go. Now we can see here when we started at WPAR, that took uh, just about seven seconds, so they're pretty quick to start. When we're actually stopping at WPAR, of course it's doing an orderly shutdown, uh, closing down the processes and things, uh, tidying up, forcing out the file system, and then actually stopping the WPAR. So that actually takes uh, around 40 or 50 seconds, so we'll let that run. Now in the meantime, we're stopping this WPAR called WP10. Let's go and find out uh, as much information as we can about that actual WPAR. The w S W bar command capital minus L and the name and we can find out all the details that we can find out about this uh, particular W bar. There we go. So it's a type uh, system. Uh, it's created by root. Uh, the host name, the directory. We're going to have a look at that in a minute. Um, then uh, we can say, well, does it auto start with the uh, copy of AIX? No. Uh, private slash user? No. It's going to use a, a shared point. Uh, file system and it's checkpointable so this is a W bar that can be started and stopped that also means that it can be uh, we can use mobility to move it to a different machine here we find the uh, the network address for this particular W bar and uh, the network details in here here the file systems in here so we can see that there are uh, slash proc in here not really a file system but um, it's uh, actually device driver. We see uh, slash user and slash opt here are read only and they're based on the uh, file systems in the global copy of AIX. And the other ones though, the root, home, temp and var are NFS mount points. And, okay, and down below we have uh, resource control. Uh, yes, so we're actually using the AIX workload manager software to actually uh, monitor the resources. Um, the last uh, operation that was performed on here was the uh, stop. Down below here we have the uh, security ratings, which is page up. Here they all are. If you're uh, hot on rollback access control, you probably know more about these than I do. Then down below here we have uh, some of the uh, special devices that are also being assigned to this uh, WPAR. Um, slash uh, null, for example. There's a different one for each of the WPAR, so that you don't share that uh, device driver with the global area that uh, improves uh, concurrency and things. Let's look at these directories that are associated to a workload partition. We've got an active one here, so let's um, let go and have a look. No, there's a, an S on the end of the file name here. There's uh, one directory in here for each of the uh, file systems. If we change to
to a directory for a running workload partition. If you've used AX for any number of years, you'll recognize what's going on here. This looks very much like a copy of AIX, and that's what we have. Let's now look at how we create a WPAR from the command line. Here's our current uh, WPAR defined on this machine. Now we did have a WPAR called WP13, and I've just deleted that and went to the NFS server and deleted all the files in those file systems. And we're going to recreate that now. Now I could type in the uh, complicated command to do this, but I find it much easier to actually use a script and I can get it right first time. So I have a little script here that is going to show us various ways of making a WPAR, and we'll then we're on one of these. The first one up here is the mkwpar command, make wpar. We just need to give it a name, and this is all we need to actually create a very basic wpar, and then we can uh, build from there. But it would be nice to have it on a network when we start, so that we can tell it into it and access it that way. So the sec second option here we have the details, we have a, a name of wpar, they're giving it the host name, which I keep the same for sanity reasons. Then we've got the network details with the IP address and the network mask. We also got a minus R on here, which means use the DNS settings for uh, resolve.conf from the global copy of AIX so that our WPAR will come up using uh, DNS. The third one we have here is uh, what I'll actually run. It has more details in here. I split them across lines to make it easier to read. The first uh, four lines we've already seen. The minus C means make this check pointable so that we can actually use um, WPAR migration. And then we have four lines at the bottom here that define the four NFS file systems that we need to make this check pointable and relocatable. So we have uh, one line for the root file system, one for home, one for temp, and one for var. And as we haven't specified them, we also have uh, read-only access to slash user and slash ops by default. There is a, a fourth way of doing that with this little command here. We're using what's called a spec file. Looks uh, a bit easy, but in that file we have lots of details, and we can uh, see those down here. These are all the details that actually make up our WPAR uh, in these uh, stanza format and uh, there should be fairly obvious what's going on there for the mount file systems that we actually want to uh, use. There's some further details down here about security and the attributes to use. So we can use any of these different uh, versions. We, uh, I tend to prefer just using a little command uh, like this one here. And we can create a spec file from a currently running WPAR and then um, change that spec file to be the uh, a new version, for example. Or we can use a spec file to for example, deploy a WPAR onto a new machine if we're doing it manually rather than using the workload manager. So now let's run this particular command and create a WPAR. We can see the first couple of lines here. It's creating the file systems. It's creating, uh, moving across a lot of uh, files from the global system into the WPAR. then in the next phase we'll be installing various packages into the uh, new file systems that we've created. You can see here that by default we have uh, 209 packages and this will uh, carry on over a few minutes. Okay, that's just finished. As we can see here, it's gone through everything. It took uh, just uh, under th four minutes, I think it was. And uh, at the end, we got actually a failure message here, but this isn't anything to, to worry about. If you re ring this uh, sync root command, we are okay. It even gives you a prompt here that you can start up WP13, so let's do that now. Now it's uh, up and running. If we run this again, we find 
WB13 is there and active. And how can we actually access that? Well, we can turn it to it um, across the network, or we can actually directly access it from the global area that's actually hosting it at the moment. And we use a command called CLogin to do that. So let's do that now. And we get logged in straight away. And uh, host name set correctly. And we're on the network with the right IP address. Now with the C login command, this allows us to do things, for example, when we don't have a network or if there's a problem with a network. So we can use C login to get onto the W part and, and fix the network settings. But I would ask a little bit of caution there. Any process that you start with the C logging way of getting into the W par, none of those processes will survive a relocation or a um, mobility. Um, so you have to be very careful there. We're in a special sort of uh, environment that we've pretended to turn out into the machine, but we haven't really. And processes created like this are definitely stopped whenever you do a migration. An application mobility via the command line. Well, I've got a little script here that will show us the uh, basic flow of information and the four commands we actually have to run. On the source AIX machine, we're going to run this command checkpoint WPAR. Spelling is particularly uh, difficult. This is a command that comes when you purchase the workload partition manager and it's a package that you install called MCR, MIOSYS checkpoint restart package. And uh, once we have this installed on in our system, then we can run it. You'll find it in this directory. And we're going to have to tell it, first of all, the WPAR that we actually want to change by name, WP13 in this case. Then we're going to have to tell it a directory in which to put all the state information and all the process memory that we're actually using in our WPAR into an NFS-mounted file system. So here we're using the slash temp file system of the WPAR itself. We also need to tell it a log file, and that will keep track of how it uh, progresses, and if there are any errors, they'll appear in here so we can backtrack and find out what happened. Finally, there's the minus K option. This is minus kill, and this will actually, once the checkpoint uh, has frozen the processes, saved them, it'll actually kill all the processes in the W part, so the W part will actually stop at that point. Then, because we're moving this W part to another machine, we have to remove it from uh, this machine, so we're using the remove W part command. But the minus P option here says to preserve the file systems. Don't actually delete everything in the W part, just disconnect from it, um, unmount it, and then uh, forget everything you knew about this W part. Then on the target machine, we have to, it's never heard of WP13, so we have to teach it about that. We use that uh, same make WPAR command to actually do that, but again we add the option minus P to the same uh, command so that it doesn't do a full install like we did with the make WPAR command. It accepts all the information and the files that are actually in the WPAR as is. So it works actually very quickly, it's just a couple of seconds to create the relevant map points and the details about the WPAR itself. Then the opposite to the checkpoint command is the restart command. Again, we have to tell it which WPAR we want to be restarted. We have to tell it the directory in which all the process and state information was saved. And we have to give it uh, another log file so that if anything goes wrong, again, it can report what was the actual problem. And with those four commands, we can then do manual command line uh, application mobility. Now let's take a very brief look at the alternative to system workload partitions, the application workload partitions. Remember these are even more lightweight and uh, it runs a particular command. Once that command is finished, the WPAR is uh, dismantled. When we're creating an application workload partition, we use, instead of the make WPAR, we actually use the WPAR exec command. Here we give the WPAR a name. I'm going to give it a host name in this case, and I'm going to run a very simple command, sleep30, so this entire WPAR will only run for 30 seconds. It's already created it, and it's already running. If we now quickly look, we can see we have a WPAR called temp, and its host name is temporary. And we can quickly log on to that WPAR. Here we go. 
we can see that host name is set and we can do for example have a look at the processes running very few indeed in fact the only real thing running here is the sleep command once that sleep actually finishes we will uh, stop the WPAR and it will be removed there we go it's already happened we've been logged off uh, if you look at WPARs again and it's already gone we can do uh, many other things we do with system partitions we can for example give it the network parameters so that it's on the network it can then talk to other servers or users can uh, log on to it while it's running we can also mount uh, file systems so perhaps the application actually needs some uh, data uh, by default it shares the file systems of the underlying global copy of AIX so if your application workload partition writes to slash temp it's actually into slash temp of your global copy of AIX in the next movie we're going to look at the differences between a workload partition environment and a global copy of AIX